and we just get each other so well that it's it's pretty easy. Now, that's not to say that our marriage is without I mean we we struggle a lot with like for I feel like for a while it's been, you know, we're lacking in the husband wife intimacy department because you know, because of life. Um that's kind of the season that we've been in um but I think the way we make our partnership work is just just res- mutual respect for each other and understanding each other so well. I mean, I know what he's thinking at, at any given minute. I know, I think I know what he's thinking better than he knows what he's thinking. You're listening to the MILF Podcast. This is the show where we talk about motherhood and sexuality with amazing women with fascinating stories to share on the joys of being a MILF. Now, here's your host, the MILFiest MILF I know, Jennifer Tracy. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. This is MILF Podcast, the show where we talk about motherhood, sexuality, entrepreneurship, parenthood, parenting styles, and balancing that and so much more. I'm your host, Jennifer Tracy. So happy to be here with you guys. Lisa is a mom of four and she lives in Houston with her four children and her husband, Joey, and two pot-bellied pigs and six dogs, five of whom only have three legs. As you can already tell, Lisa has a huge heart and she's just an exceptional human being. And I'm so grateful that I had the chance to interview her and uh, just wanted to thank you guys again for tuning in to the show. I'm so grateful to be able to do this and to be able to have these meaningful conversations with just an incredible um, caliber of women every week. It's, it's really been transformational for me. I hope that it is continuing to touch you guys on a deep level and really ultimately help us all feel less alone. All right. So without further ado, here's my interview with Lisa Eicher. Uh, please enjoy. Thanks so much for listening. Hi, Lisa. Hi, how are you, Jen? I'm good. Thank you so much for being on the show. Absolutely. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, so you are in where, what area of Texas are you in? We're in Houston, a little bit north of Houston. Right, right. And you're, you are rebuilding your house after the flooding. Right. Yes. It's been a long, it's been a little over a year since Harvey flooded us out. And I guess we've been back in our house. Um, technically, we moved back in like early. Uh, I mean, we've been back in since like February, but we've, we moved back in before it was finished. So we've been back in, but under construction and, ah, uh, it's been a challenge. We're, we're still, we're pretty much done, but, um, there's just a lot of little things that, you know, never ending. Oh, yeah. so. Of course. I'm sure it'll be, as you said, never ending process. It is. It's never ending. There's always something. So now, are you from Texas originally? Yeah. Yep. Born and raised in Houston. Okay. Okay. And you how many siblings did you have growing up? So I had uh, two brothers. I was in between two brothers um, and then a sister who came along 10 years after me. So there was kind of three of us. And then 10 years later, we had a baby sister. Wow. What was that like? It was crazy. It was amazing. Um, I was happy to have a sister after you know being between two boys because my brothers and I were super close in age. I was two years younger than my brother, my older brother, and then my little brother was just 16 months younger than I was. So we were all very close in age and always with my brothers. And so I was happy to have a sister. Yeah. Oh, and um, so you had four children growing up in your family and now you have four children. Correct. Yep. Yep. Which is incredible. So you grew up and and what was your childhood like there in, in, in Texas? Like, what were you into? What were your passion? I mean, my brothers and I, when I was, you know, elementary school age, we were just into anything athletic, super competitive. I mean, we had, uh, you know, always had either a basketball game going outside in the driveway or ping pong matches going on. Um, yeah. Super competitive. Pretty much. We could make a competition out of literally anything. <laughs> so that, you know, that was kind of our, our lives really was sports and and playing together, being outside, um, all that good stuff. A very, very typical childhood. Yeah. And then you, your husband, you met him in high school, correct? Right, right. We've actually known each other since we were little kids. We went to the same church growing up. And then we, 
uh, ended up in the same math class in high school. And, and that's where it all started. <laughs> you fell in love over algebra or something. Oh, so, like yeah, yeah. Right? Geometry. <laughs> geometry. Oh, God, I hated geometry. I couldn't get it. I could not get yeah, it. I just, it weird. I didn't get any math. That's that's for sure. <laughs> How old were you when you got? Did you guys then go to college? So we, uh, we, I was actually a year ahead of him in school. So I graduated and stayed in Houston and went to U of H, University of Houston. And then um, it's a, kind of a couple of reasons, though. He was he was still in school, and then also my little sister, who was ten years younger than I was, you know, was just eight at the time I was graduating high school and we were super close. I mean, I coached her softball teams and basketball teams and, and and Joey and I both actually, we, we did everything with her. And so I could not stand to go away and miss, you know, years eight to 12 of her life. So, um, so it kind of all worked out to where I stayed home, um, went to college in Houston and then, um, and then he did the same. We both stayed in Houston and, um, yeah, we got married at, he was, it was a couple of days after his 22nd birthday. I was 22. Ah! And so oh my goodness. Baby. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's so amazing. So how long have you been married now? Oh gosh. We had our 11 year anniversary this past summer. So yeah. Wow. Congratulations. That's, That's amazing. And what were you doing like for work or, you know, what was your college degree in? What were your... I was in education. So I was, I was a teacher. And I taught um, for a couple of years before having kids. And then I've kind of been back and forth a couple of times um, in the teaching world. Uh, my degree was in middle, I taught middle school. So, wow. So rough years. <laughs> That's not, yeah. It takes a special, um, there's a special gift to work with that age yeah, group. Yeah. It was not easy. So, my yeah. first year teaching, I was, I was, you know, I was, barely 22 and I was teaching eighth grade and, and it was, it was tough. It was very tough. So you have four kids. So tell me their names and ages. Right. Okay. So we have Ace. She's our first and, um, she's 10. So she's our first, she was born to us biologically. And then after, when she was uh, three, we adopted our son, Archie, um, who was seven at the time. So he's now 14. Uh, and then a couple of years later, we had our little boy Radco, who's four now, biologically. And then a couple of years later, we adopted our daughter Sevi, who is about to be fifteen. Uh, so it's all very, <laughs> very out of order and confusing. Our first is our second youngest, and our most recent is our oldest. So yeah, kind of confusing, but that's how it is. So tell me about the decision to adopt Archie. Sure. Um, so I pretty much always from a very young age knew that, um, I wanted to be an adoptive mother. I, it was just in me. I, um, I have a picture that I keep, uh, in my bedroom. That's from my fifth grade graduation that, um, I, we had to write down what we wanted to be when we grew up on a cutout star. And then they took a picture of us for our, uh, slideshow at our graduation. And my thing was foster care mother. So wow. and I didn't really at the time, like understand, I knew what it meant, but I didn't understand like why that was, I was so sure about writing that down. Um, and so I just guess that I knew I was always going to, to be a mother to somebody who wasn't born to me, to a child that wasn't born to me. And, um, and so, I mean, I told Joey from the very beginning, like that's, you know, one day we will adopt, <laughs> and, you know, back in high school, he's like, okay, sure. Uh, <laughs> so I just always, I just always knew that that was going to be a part of my, my life. And I think when our daughter Ace um, was about two is when we started talking about adding another one to the family. And I think that Joey and I both thought that adoption would be kind of on down the road um, a little later in life, but. I just felt a tug and, um, and just told him, I think we need to look into adoption. And, um, and so we did and along came Archie. <laughs> and so what was the process of that? You know, kind of, I mean, I know I'm sure it's a long story, but. So it just started with me just researching, like, you know, there's so many different international, domestic, what country, you know, older child, infant, you know, there's just so many different different options. And so what happened for us was we initially wanted to adopt a baby younger than Ace. Um, we just, that's what we figured was the right thing to do. Um, 
so we were looking into um, adopting an infant in different countries and, and all that good stuff. But in my research, I came across an organization called Reese's Rainbow. And um, it is an adoption ministry for kids with Down syndrome and other special needs who are waiting for families all over the world. Um, and so that that's another major passion of mine and Joey is um, people with, with different abilities. And, and um, so when I found that, I was like, oh man, this is where our kid is. Um, this is where we're going to find our kid. And so still was looking for a baby. Um, and just, you know, there's thousands of, of pictures and it's, it's all heartbreaking. Um, but we landed on, we decided on Bulgaria because it just worked best for our uh, it, it fit all, we fit all the requirements for Bulgaria. We didn't fit like some countries you had to be a little older or married for 10 years or, you know, things like that. Bulgaria fit for us. And so we decided on Bulgaria and then the director of Reese's Rainbow sent me a photo of a little boy and just said, how about this little guy? He's been waiting a really long time. And I opened it and was just like, Oh yeah, that's him. That's our son. It was automatic. It was, you know, I had no doubt. And I, I mean, I already was like, yep, yeah, well, we, we, I committed to him before I even told Joey, <laughs> he got home and I was like, here's our son. Uh, of course he, he felt the same way I did. So uh, yeah, it was just, and then, you know, and then a lot of, we had to travel there one trip. We traveled there to meet him and spend a week with him and then um, had to come home for several months while all the court stuff and legal stuff happened in Bulgaria. And then, um, that was about four months in between. And wow, that's such a long time. Was that yeah, agonizing that waiting? Was the hardest part, honestly. Oh. Um, I mean, honestly, it was, it was torture because you go there, you spend a week bonding with him and he bonded really quickly with us. He attached to us very quickly. And especially Ace went with us when she was only three, uh, barely three. And, and so it was super hard. They attached really quickly and, and he, he, he understood, like he, he was able to understand that we were his family and that his caretakers there at the orphanage really did a good job of, of explaining to him what was happening. And, and so it was very hard. He did not speak English, um, had a translator with us and, um, he kind of spoke like his own little language, a little bit of Bulgarian, but, um, lots of times our translator, I'd say like, what was all that? And she was like, I have no idea. So, um, but uh, yeah, so he, so yeah, the, the coming back, the in-between months were some of the hardest really ever of my life because we had to see where he was living, which was horrible and, and then come home. And so, yeah, I kind of like lived on Eastern European time and was like, didn't sleep, was constantly checking my email, you know, up all night. So could you yeah. communicate with him? I mean, so you have the language barrier and then the... Yeah, I mean, so the the language barrier was tough, but he's he's super bright and he was always able to uh, communicate whatever it was. Um, but he we actually started using sign language when he first came home, and that's how we communicated for a while until he um, really picked up. So we actually we were super lucky. We had a uh, and this is, doesn't happen in in many adoption cases, but there was a woman there who worked at his orphanage who was, uh, worked in this day program that he actually got to go to kind of like a little school at, on the orphanage grounds. And she was like a psychologist and she cared about him deeply. She was kind of his, his mother there. And so she, she and I would email, she would email me pictures and um, she didn't speak English, but she had a, a high school age daughter who spoke English. So her daughter would actually email with me and then read my emails to her. And um, so I did get to, um, you know, and it wasn't every day, but it was more than most people get. And um, so that helped. Um, I got, you know, pictures like we, we missed his birthday. His birthday was in between the two trips. So that was really hard, but they photos and, um, and all that good stuff. So. So we did with him, we, we had, we were lucky that we did get to at least know that he was happy and healthy and, and doing well. Yes. And then, so he came home to you and what was that transition like for, for the family? Yeah. Um, with him, I mean, honestly, it was, 
as far as adopting an older child with Down syndrome, um, you know, from a different country, it was as smooth as any transition I've ever heard of. He really just fell right into our family and it was like he had always been part of our family. He was, uh, of course he had, um, he had lots of institutional behaviors and, and stuff we had to work through. Like but what were some of those things that were challenging for you? You know, like just, um, food was a major issue. Um, he, you know, he, he couldn't, uh, he didn't understand, you know, he had a full plate of food that, that, um, he'd never seen anything like before. And so he would, um, eat so fast that he would, uh, choke. And so we had to really work on, you know, portioning his food and slowing him down on his eating. He would also hoard food, um, and hide food under his bed and, um, Lots of food issues. Um, but yeah, we would find food, you know, full food from the refrigerator hidden under his bed, you know, and stuff like that. So, um, and then lots of, um, he had, um, we call them episodes, um, kind of, I think it's just from living through so much trauma. He, if he was in trouble or did something that we didn't like and we tried to correct him, um, he would kind of go into a tailspin. Um, and it's almost like he would um, just, he was blacked out and just raging. And, um, so stuff like that was tough. I had to like, you know, Google and research how to like safely restrain a child, you know, when they're having a moment like that, an episode. And, um, and that for a while that was daily. Um, and so that was probably the hardest part for me, Uh, but it was, the weird thing was, it was just in those moments and they would last a good 30 minutes to an hour and then finally he would come out of it and just be crying and so sad. And, um, you know, so th- that was the hardest part for me. Like, so there's so many layers to this. This is such a beautiful story and there's so much more of it because then you get Sevy and then, well, then you have, no, then you have Radco and then you get Sevy. But just so for this portion, so you have a little girl who's three and a half and you have this new adopted son in your family who's, you know, having these difficulties that are challenging, like really challenging physically for you all. And then um, I can't even imagine emotionally what was going on for Mm. you and your husband and your daughter. Like, so I have two questions. One is how did you kind of guide your daughter through this? Mm -hmm. Gosh, she is, I mean, she's a totally I don't even know how to explain her. She's like a different species. She is the coolest kid and always has been since she was a toddler. Um, she, it was, I was nervous, um, about, and that was to back up. That was a lot of people's concerns with us. Even before we adopted Archie, just knowing that this was our plan was, you know, what about ACE? What is this going to do to her? How is this going to affect her? And, and, um, and I, I was just so confident in what we were doing that I, it didn't scare me. Um, of course, of course there were, you know, especially once he was home and, and, and I saw some of these behaviors, it, it did, you know, it did, I did look at her and think, Oh God, I've got to, you know, protect her, shield her from these, these moments. Um, but she, she kind of just always, she, she, like I said earlier, the two of them attached very quickly. They were really each other's like security blankets. Um, and so she kind of just always, knew what to do in, in these moments. She, I, you know, she would go away and, you know, if he was having an episode, just go into another room and, and kind of wait until it was over. She was never, um, upset or, um, she was upset for him. She was sad for him. She, her, you know, her heart broke for him. And, um, and that always did make me sad, but, but it also, you know, cause she would cry and, and say, why is Archie, you know, feeling that way? And and why is he so upset? And, and so I would talk to her about it. And we would talk about, you know, where he was before. And, and um, we've always just, we've always talked about any and everything. We have very open dialogue. And, and so I think just her being so comfortable talking about it all, and, and me answering all of her questions and being super honest with her. And she's always she's an old soul. So I've, I've always been able to, to be honest with her. And, and um she just she just is a very empathetic kid and so she hasn't um a lot of the times like i said i i struggled seeing her sad over him being sad or him being hurt 
And, and that's the, but, but then on the other hand, I'm like, ah, that's amazing. She had like, her heart is incredible. So, so it, you know, it's been, I, I wrote a blog post a few years ago. I think it was titled, what about ACE? Because, you know, everybody's question was, what about ACE? What about ACE? And so, and it was just stories of, of them together and, and her kind of, you know, her heart for him. And, and so the point being like, look at her, like this is, this has changed her world in the most amazing way. So she's kind of just always, you know, not to say that it's been without, you know, struggle and bumps, but, um, but she's kind of, she's just a real mature kid and, and she just stepped into it. Yeah. She just, it, it was like, she was made for it. Honestly. I mean, like I said, she went with us on that first trip to Bulgaria. So, I mean, she was in there in the orphanage, like taking care of the other or other orphans in there and, and pushing them around in their strollers and helping them eat. And so she, you know, it was just kind of like she was made for this life. Wow. That's beautiful. So, and then just to touch on this, like at that time for you, were you working? Were you writing? Cause I know Lisa, um, guys is an amazing, beautiful writer. Um, and I got to experience that. Um, cause the reason I met Lisa is cause we went on a writer's retreat together. So were you at that time? able to, were you, were you working? Were you writing? What were I stopped teaching when we decided that, uh, we were going to adopt. I came home and, and, and so I was home with ACE and doing the whole stay at home mom thing and writing. Um, I was, I've kind of always been writing. And so I wasn't necessarily working on anything specific. I did start I did start blogging more just mostly it started just to keep friends and family updated on the process. And when we went to meet him kind of, you know, what it was all looking like and everything like that. And, and then, and then it kind of turned into my, my space for writing and and sharing. So it kind of turned into more from there, but yeah, I, I, so I stayed home with Archie and, and I knew that we were going to need to really have time together just to bond. Um, you know, a lot of time. So I stayed home with him and, and he didn't go to school for, for several months. And we, we just stayed home and, and learned all about each other and, and hung out and bonded. At what point did you get pregnant again? Oh goodness. Let's see. Ace was six when Radco was born. So, so yeah, about two years after Archie came home, it's like, been pretty much it's been two years in two between. years two years two years right because when Radco was two is when you went again I mean it's just I'm so fascinated by you I always have been I think this is just like the most amazing thing so then you get inspired and say like how what what inspired you so you have three kids <laughs> it's just like oh my god I have one kid I can barely like put my shirt on in the morning I'm, I don't know how you do it but um so you have three kids and your littlest one is is two or about almost two I think and then what conversation are you having with your husband that you're like, Hey, hun, guess what? Like what, how does that come to be? Like, what is that? Gosh, Sevi's story is a, an interesting and, and unexpected and, and long one. I I'll, I'll kind of give you the gist of how it all. Okay. Okay. Cause yeah, it's, it's a, it's a crazy one. So, um, what actually happened was way back when Joey went to pick up Archie from uh, on the pickup trip, he went by himself to pick him up um, in Bulgaria. He met a little boy in his orphanage who was not there on our first trip, but who had who had arrived um, between trips. And so he met this little boy and who also had Down syndrome, and he kind of fell in love with him and was like, "Oh my gosh, if we could bring him home, um, you know, I would do it in a heartbeat." But he wasn't available for adoption at the time. There's, you know, just lots of uh, he his. Red birth family hadn't signed off and exactly yeah. all these different legalities and stuff. And so he wasn't available for adoption, but he came home and, and we said, and we, we kept in touch with the psychologist at the orphanage I mentioned earlier. And we would, I would, we would check on in on him periodically. His name was Yavor and we would check in on him periodically and, and whatnot. And then a few years passed, it wasn't ever, he was just never becoming available. We, I think at some point we kind of gave up and then a few years passed, we had Radco and somebody sent me an uh, email with a f- uh, from the Bulgarian photo listing of uh, kids available for adoption and said, isn't this the little guy that y'all, you know, were in love with and wanted to adopt? And, and it was him uh, years later. And so we were like, oh my goodness, like we were not planning on this, but 
Um, we always said we would, we have to, we have to go get him. So that's, that's where it started. We, we started the ball rolling with, with him. And then what happened was we, we started that process. And then I was in this Facebook group for um, Bulgarian adoptions. And one day mid process with Yavor, I'm just scrolling through this Facebook page and I stop, I, it stops in my tracks, this picture of this little girl. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh. And again, I, you know, like I said earlier, I, I see faces of orphans all, you know, all the time, all over the world. And, and of course it, I, it breaks my heart and, and I ache for them, but it, it was this same feeling that I had when I saw Archie's picture. It was a very obvious, like, holy crap, that's my kid. Like that is my child. And, and it wasn't even, it was, she was this, you know, 12 year old, um, just little girl. It was nothing, nothing special about the picture. Um, but it just, I knew that she was ours. So it was like, well, I, I just, there was no doubt in my mind. We had to move forward and, and, and adopt her as well. Um, so fast forward, we went to Bulgaria to meet both children and, um, and spend a week with each of them. And the very, the, a lot of times these kids are, um, are very aggressive. Um, just, it's not their fault. It's how it's life in an institution. They have to be, it's, you know, fight or flight type of deal for them. And so, um, before we went to Bulgaria, I had asked many times, uh, of both children are either of them aggressive because I knew having a baby Radko was actually just one uh, at the time of our first trip. And, um, and I knew having a baby in the home that we couldn't have a child who was aggressive, who was physically aggressive to other children. And so that was just going to be a deal breaker for me. So I asked many times and, and, um, especially with Yavor, because I knew he was in a really rough place. Um, he had been transferred to an institution for older, uh, technically an adult institution. And, and so I was worried about him being aggressive and I was told, no, 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 you know, he does have some, you know, minor aggression issues, but nothing major. It'll be fine. Um, and so, uh, Ace and I were actually, Joey couldn't go on that first trip with us. He, he had to work and couldn't be there. And so it was just going to be Ace and I on that first trip. Um, or she wasn't an option to bring back. I, you know, could have been seriously traumatic for him to go back there. So, so it was just going to be me and Ace going. And then very last minute, I decided that I, I couldn't leave Radko. He had just turned one and I being away from him for a week, like gave me like serious panic attacks. I just, I couldn't do it. So very last minute I added him, I bought him a plane ticket and, and he came with us, which is literally the craziest thing I've ever done is fly to Bulgaria with, with a one year old. <laughs> one year old. And I guess Ace was what, eight at the time. But yeah. I mean, like, so she was great. She's, you know, so easy and mature. But I mean, I, I one of our flights, I think, was 11 hours. And I just kept telling myself he didn't sleep a wink and he, he had just started walking. So he was just toddling around the plane and I mean, I just kept, I had to, I, I thought I was going to die. I, I really did. I was like, if I survive this flight, and this <laughs> oh my flight God. I can literally do anything. I mean, it was freaking nuts. So anyway, long story short, we get to Bulgaria, we see Yavor first and, and thank God I did. I, I think that the whole adding Radko last minute was, was a blessing in disguise because it turned out that Yavor was, was seriously aggressive, especially towards towards Radko, my one-year-old. And, you know, he, he just, anytime Radko got anywhere in his space, he wanted to basically kind of body slam him. Wow. Um, you know, and he was a big boy. He was 10 at the time. And, um, and so he just wanted to, you know, slam him. And, and, um, and it was, it was so hard. I was in denial for the first couple of days, like thinking, you know, it's, we're going to figure this out one way or another um his caretakers would were kind of like you know they would kind of try to pull him aside they they obviously wanted him to be adopted so they were trying to stop him from doing that and then but i saw him and at another time i saw him with another little girl in the orphanage um who was kind of up up on a little like countertop she had climbed up on and he beelined from across the room to her and 
pulled her from behind and slammed her on the ground and uh, very, you know, very scary. And, and that was kind of the moment I was like, no, I, I cannot do this to my kids. I cannot bring this into our home. And it was, I mean, honestly, the hardest thing I've, I've ever been through because it was, uh, I, I wanted him and I still do. I, my heart still breaks, um, knowing that he's, you know, still, still there. Um, but I, I just, it just was not an option. Um, and, and at one point, I think it was on the fourth day, one of his caretakers said, you will just have to keep him away from the baby. Oh God. Yeah. Um, and I was like, do that? that's not an option. Yeah. That was that, that I couldn't be yeah. guarding him all day. The and, kids. Yeah, yeah. It was, that was not an option. It would not have worked for our, for our family in any way, shape or form. So, so I had to, um, to call Joey and, and tell him that I didn't think we could move forward. Ugh, um, and so it was, it was very just devastating in every way. Um, so we let, had to let go of him. And, um, but then the next week we got to go and meet Sevi, um, who, as soon as we met her, it was obvious. She was, she was meant to be ours. She and Ace and Radko were, um, you know, best friends right away. And, um, I mean, it was, it was magical. They were, um, it was just one, it was the same with Archie. It was like, she's, yeah, this is, this is obvious. It's she's a fit. Yeah. It was just a and fit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was no doubt. So I, I look back on, on kind of, I think in that moment, it was like, why, you know, it was just all the whys and, and why is this happening? And, and why, you know, it, can we not bring Yavor home? And, and, and then it, it kind of all started to make sense it without having, you know, without Yavor having popped back up into our lives and without having committed to adopt him, we would have never found Sevi. He literally led us to Sevi. And so, so as hard as it is, it kind of all started making, making sense to me. And I was, have been over time I mean, it's still hard, but over time I've been able to, to find peace with it all. And, um, and yeah, Sevi is <laughs> so our kid. Um, and yeah, so she's been home for, for two years now. And she, and Sevi also has Down syndrome? Sevi also has Down syndrome, okay. yes. And how the kids are all in school. Do you homeschool some of the kids or are they all in school? Right now, we're, I'm homeschooling all four. Wow, uh, that's amazing, Lisa. How do you do that? I really admire that, by the way. I think that's amazing. You know, I don't really know how I do it. Um, <laughs> I'm just surviving, honestly. Um, it's so hard. It really is. Um, but at the same time, it's it's so amazing. We we needed it so badly. Um, the decision came from uh, after Sevi came home, and she was not as easy of a transition into the family as Archie was. It was actually very rough. Um, we were not bonding. Uh, with the kids, it was fine. Uh, it was more sh- me and her. And in, in turn, that was throwing off our entire family unit. I was miserable. She was, she hated me. Um, I was often thinking like, what the hell did we do? I, I can't stand this child and, and I don't want to be her mom. And, uh, and which is, you know, I, I say that knowing that it sounds terrible Um, but it's real. And, um, a lot of adoptive moms have these feelings and, and don't like to talk about it because it it feels very shameful. Um, well, thank you for, thank you for talking about it. Cause I think that's so important and it's real and it's, and it is, and yeah, it is important. And I've, I've shared, I've, I'm pretty vulnerable on, on social media and, and really honest with, with, especially with Sevi and how that's been. And, And every time I share something like that, I get so many direct messages from moms that are, you know, in the same space. So I know, and I'm, I know where Sevi and I are now and it's, it's amazing. And, and I'm, I love her so much and I, I would cross the world every day to get her. Um, so I know where we are now. I just, I also know the struggles, but that's where, that's what brought us to this point. So, uh, so that's, so that's where the decision to start homeschooling really came was, um, they were all in different schools. I was, you know, driving all over town. Um, we weren't getting home until, you know, four thirty or five even from, from school. And then we had no time together as a family. We had this new child in our, in our life and in our family who 
we didn't really know who was, it wasn't a baby. She was 12 years old. And I just was like, we've got to, we've got to do something major to, to bring this family together. And, um, and so that's what we did. We decided to start homeschooling them. And, um, and honestly, it's been the best, best thing for us. It's been amazing. It's brought us all so close together. So, so how do you orchestrate that? I know there's different kinds of homeschooling stuff. Like there's where you have an outside person come in or there's sometimes there's now these, there's these places where you can send them twice a week to do activities. So how, so how does it work for you guys? For us um, right now and how it has been. So last year was our first year of, of full homeschooling them. Uh, and that's when we were hit by Harvey. Ugh literally in the first like few, I mean, it was in August. So we didn't really have a year of, of actual school per se, as far as, right. you know, as far as the, the curriculum goes, we, we were more just, we were living at my mother-in-law's mm. and, you know, all six of us in a, her three bedroom oh townhouse. And, um, so, uh, so we just had a year of like, adventure and let's just get out in the world and and road trip and hang out and uh so that's that's how last year went and so this year's been our first school year of a little bit more structure and so it's just it's just me teaching them um and you have an education background so it's kind of perfect perfect it helps definitely um i've taught everywhere from second grade, or actually I've taught pre preschool even for a while. So I've taught everywhere from preschool to eighth grade. So, you know, I have that background, which definitely helps with, well, with really everything with building them curriculums and with, you know, the behavior stuff and all that. So it is interesting having to kind of be in teacher mode um, and mom mode and where, where's the line and all that good stuff. A but, lot of hats going on there. Right. Yeah, it is. And they're all kind of on different levels. So there's a lot of different needs that, that have to be met. But Um, we've tried, I've been just trying kind of a lot of different approaches this year and seeing what works best for our family. And I would say at this point, we're, we're more of, uh, we lean more towards the unschooling, um, world, which is just kind of, um, not a whole lot of structure, but more, uh, just kind of education and learning based on what they're wanting to do at any given moment. So, um, I just kind of follow their lead and, everything turns into um, everything we do turns into some sort of teaching moment, whether it's the kids counting out fruit at the farmer's market or um, so for the little ones, they're counting the fruit and for ACE, she's weighing it and multiplying what the tax will be and stuff like that. So it's, so it's, it's just kind of like wherever we are, whatever we're doing, I have to kind of, I have to be real intentional with, you know, what can I turn into a lesson here? Um, it's a, yeah, it's it's been fun for us. I don't know how you know how long it'll how long we'll homeschool for. Um, it's up to them whether they want to go to school or not. I you know let them make those decisions. Ace, my ten year old, who's more most she's the not the oldest, but she's like the oldest. So sometimes I say that she she loves it. She's kind of a different learner anyway, and she likes learning about stuff that they don't learn about in school and she loves social justice issues and she loves um you know animals and and stuff like that so so it's it's been great for her she's been able to to really dive into all these things that she loves so that's awesome and so now Sevi has become this celebrity artist <laughs> can you talk about this for a little bit i mean by the way so you know i'm friends with ashley longshore yes yes and so yes, i yes. see this thing pop up on ashley's instagram like this is my friend sevi she's an artist and here's her painting. i was like wow this is amazing so can you tell me a little bit about that and how you guys discovered that how she was you know and and what it has become because you just showed me your studio which is very impressive yeah, it's it's been unreal the whole thing. I mean, so I guess it was a, a little over a year into to her being home. I and and we we had like I said been struggling she and I to really find any common ground to bond on any level. Um and and you also have a pig, right? You tell me about your pets real quick and then we'll go back to the art. We have six dogs and um Five of them have three legs. Love it. <laughs> I don't know why. It's so weird. 
like who has five dogs with three legs. You do because um, that's your yeah, heart. That's, that's yeah, your yeah. heart. Well, people just keep telling me about like we started with one three legged dog. <laughs> and it's like hey, it's another one. Like as if we're the only people in the world that make in three legged dogs. You know. So I'm like, and then they tell me about them, and I'm like, oh gosh, okay, fine, we'll take them. Um, but yeah, and then we have um, two pet pigs. Oh, you have two pet pigs. I didn't really show two. Okay. And they're, are they pot bellied pigs? Is that what they're called? Yeah. They're adorable. They're, yeah, they're the best. I mean, they're, they're, they're basically like dogs, but, but easier. They don't require quite as much. So Snappy and I were, I mean, we were just like, it was just not happening for us. And, um, as far as bonding, we were really still struggling after a year. And, um, I mean, had gotten much better progressively, but it was like a very slow incline of, of progress. And, and so, uh, I would sit every night I sit up and that's when I do my writing. I would sit at my kitchen table and write. Um, and she started wanting to come and sit with me and, and draw. And at first I was like, Oh my God, no, get the hell out of here. This is like my time. And I don't want you here in my space. I need like, I need to be away from you. Um, but she kind of, you know, she kind of insisted and I started, so I started, okay, maybe if I just let her sit there, this could be something good. And, and so that kind of became our time together. She would sit there and draw and I would sit there and write. And, um, I didn't pay any attention to her drawings. Um, for a while and then she started kind of inviting me in and wanting to show me what she was drawing and and so I started paying more attention and I was like wait like she's not just scribbling on paper she's like drawing detailed intricate things and really amazing stuff and she would she would try to explain to me you know using sign language what you know what she was what she was drawing and what was in each picture because she wasn't speaking English yet Okay. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, she wasn't speaking and she's completely nonverbal. So she still doesn't speak. Right, right. So, uh, which is another cool part of this whole thing. So she, she, uh, yeah, I just got chills. Now I'm putting it yeah. all together with the, right. Yeah, yeah. So I know it's nuts. I still get chills and I get to see it every day. So, um, so yeah. So I, I told Joey, I was like, I think she's, there's something in her. She, she's an artist. Like she knows what she's doing. And, and so we literally went downstairs, put just a big piece of wood, uh, plywood on the ground and gave her just whatever paints we had. We were in the garage with like, you know, house paints and, and whatever little rinky dink paints we had. And, um, and then we just kind of put paint brushes out and, and stuff. And she, we just let her do her thing. And, and, she went into the garage and she grabbed like some like scraper tools and a crowbar and things that we didn't, you know, we weren't thinking she would use to, to make art with, but she went in and found them and brought them out. And I mean, she, it was, uh, we just sat there jaw dropped watching her as she threw paint onto this wood and, and made this, you know, masterpiece. And she, she knew what she was doing. Every move was very deliberate. Every, everything she did, she would layer and then she would scrape away at the layer so that other paint could, you know, come through. And it was just like the most amazing and bizarre thing that we had ever experienced. And so, but it was like, she was coming to life. And, and so that was, that was kind of our, my, you know, light bulb moment of, oh my gosh, this is like, this is her voice. And, and so that's when um, we started letting her, you know, paint more and more. And, and I think what happened was I posted um, a couple of her paintings on just my Instagram account. And, you know, I wasn't sure. I, I knew that for me, I knew that like what she was doing was amazing and, and her process was amazing. But I didn't, I, I'm not, you know, I don't have an art, art background or anything like that. So I didn't know what the reaction would be. I was just a proud mom. And so when I put it on Instagram and people were like, oh my gosh, these are absolutely incredible. Like I want to buy her art. And, and I was like, eh, like, that's not really what we're doing. But, but then I started thinking, oh my gosh, like, this is her future. Like she, you know, because she's nonverbal, because she's, you know, she was institutionalized for 12 years. She's got so many things that, that's, that made me worry about her future and, and what would she be capable of and what, you know, what would it look like with Archie? He's, you know, he's so um he speaks so well and he's so 
socially aware that I could see him going to college and I could see him having a job at, you know, many places. And, and, but with her, I always worried. So, uh, I worried what, what her future would look like. So when people started interested in buying her paintings, I was like, okay, maybe this is, maybe this is her future. And so started by just doing one little sale and she sold out like in minutes and, and Ashley Longshore is who helped me, um, with pricing her pieces to sell because I was like, okay, I ha- I have zero clue of what to do, how to do this. I, I knew that I needed to, you know, keep the integrity of her work by pricing them appropriately. Um, but I also didn't, I, ha- I just had no idea. So I reached out to her on a whim and sent her some, cause I'm just a huge fan and sent her, um, some of Sevi's paintings and said, can you help me? with like pricing and, and just the business side of this. How do I, how do I do this? And she wrote me back like almost immediately. And she was just blown away with Sevi's art, which to me was huge. I was like, okay, so this is like, cause one of my favorite artists is, you know, and she was blown away. And so she, we went back and forth for a bit and she helped me, you know, price the pieces and kind of guided me on that side of things so that I, you know, because there was a lot of pressure on me to, to... Sure. You were her manager, basically. Right, right. I had to... I couldn't, you know... And, right. I had to... I couldn't screw this up for her. So so anyway, um, and then since then, it's just been... It's been unreal. I mean, she has... We've shipped her art to, I mean, Australia, That's Paris. That's incredible. How many I mean, pieces has, has she sold so far? Oh, gosh. So let's see. Yeah, it's been maybe nine months and... She's probably sold, um, let's see, I mean, over a hundred pieces. What? Oh my God. Are you serious? Yeah. That's yeah. And all over the world. I know it's, it's, yeah, it's mind boggling. Um, and she sells out, like she sells out her collections in, I have to literally put them on. Uh, we do it, you know, it's an online sale and we've had a few lo- shows, live shows also, but I, I put them online and at last collection, she turns out she sold out in three minutes and people were How like, how many paintings are in a collection? So the recently what we've been doing is what, what we're calling 21 on 21, um, 21. It's the 21st chromosome is, is what uh, people with Down syndrome have an extra copy of. So she had so many paintings because she paints so much that I was like, we've got to like, honestly get, like clear this inventory like we've got to get this out of here so like it's taking over my entire freaking house yeah so i was like all right so let's do for a few months we'll do 21 on 21 so on the 21st of each month and we've done this since uh august september october uh yeah so september august um we started our first one and then we just had one this past uh october 21st and so so basically what we'll do is, is I'll say it's going live. It goes live at 2.10 central time on the 21st of each it. month. And then people just, I mean, it's, it's, it's so cool for us that we sit around as a family and we just watch. That's as- incredible. <laughs> Three minutes. So, okay. So wait a minute for our listeners and for myself, like how do I get on the list to be invited into that auction every month? Um, so best thing to do is, is follow Sevi's uh, Instagram, which is, at Sevi Marie Art, and, and we'll then put a link also, to that on our show notes. Yeah, so that it'll yeah, be yeah, on yeah. our website. Okay, awesome. And then we also you um, we have an email that's just Sevi Marie Art at gmail dot com that um, that you can get on our list. mailing list to just kind of okay keep up with. So we just emailed that. that. It's the, it's probably linked in her bio or something or in there, yep, and then yep, we email it's it. It's in there. Okay. Yep. Her email's in her Instagram. Okay. And then, um, just, yeah, just anybody can shoot an email and say, Hey, interested, put me on the list, whatever. Um, and then we all get an email you know, saying, Hey, tomorrow's the, yeah, get ready for, oh my God, yeah. That's so on. amazing. Yeah. It's been, uh, I mean, it's unreal. And she, I mean, best part of it all is not only does she have this incredible future now and, and she, you know, Savvy Marie Art is a, is a business and, she, you know, has this future that's like insanely bright. And, and not only that, but she has, she's a completely new person. She has like, she has come out of her shell. She has like found herself, like her first collection we called Girl Unlocked. Mm. And it was, 
that's how I feel. It's like this unlocked her and, um, she's just, yeah, it's, it's just been incredible. I mean, we, I just, before we, we got started and before the kids went with their babysitter was downstairs painting with her this morning, she wakes up asking to paint and, um, that's it's incredible. just her. Yeah. And, and it's also been amazing bonding for our family. She's, she invites us in. She wants to show us what she's doing. She wants to, for us to watch her work and which has been so, so cool. That's so. so inspiring. I'm so inspired by her. I really am. That's just so incredible. Um, so I just, there was something else I wanted to touch on. Well, two things, because um, I need to talk to you about the ninja thing. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell me about, cause I'm going to mess up the name American Ninja. American Warrior. Ninja Warrior. Okay. Yeah. Right. So when um, was that and how did it happen? And it all started, <laughs> um, it was a few years ago. Gosh, I guess we just had, um, uh, I guess our Radco was really little. So Sevy wasn't home yet when it first started. Um, but, uh, basically we watched this show together as a family, American Ninja Warrior. Um, we, we had always watched it as a family and it's just, you know, a fun, fun show to watch. And, but one night when we were watching Ace, um, said to me, mom, you could do that. You could do all that stuff. You could be on this show. And of course I like just laughed and was like, huh? LOL. Like, yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> LOL. literally I could not <laughs> do it. <laughs> I couldn't even, I, I probably at the time when she said that I was, I've always been athletic. I've always been in pretty good shape. And I would say that at that time I was at in the least good shape of my life. I, I just, you know, I just hadn't worked out in forever. I hadn't really, you know, cared to whatever. Um, and so I was like, no, I, I cannot do that. There's, that's not, that's, you know, you gotta be kidding me. And so, um, but she kept on and on about it and it was kind of weird. I was like, Oh my gosh, kid, give it up. I'm not like going on this show. And, uh, but, and then it kind of like, she just kept on. And one night I kind of, she said something like, mom, why do you keep saying you can't do that? And I was like, Oh, like that's a, that's a good question. Cause I mean, maybe I could, and maybe I needed to show them that like, uh, that's something that seemed so outrageous um, and so far out of my reach um, that I could do it. And so I, I knew of a girl who had been, um, I went to middle school with who, who trained for it. And so I reached out to her. I didn't really know her, but I, you know, we, we knew each other in the past. And so I said, Hey, you know, I'm interested in, in trying out this ninja thing. And I really just thought like I would show Ace and my kids, like, um, you know, I'll just give it a shot and see, you know, at least that shows them that I tried. (laughs) And so, but I went and I just got hooked. I loved it. I loved, um, it was kind of what I needed at that time in my life, just getting back in giving myself something and, um, something physical and fun. And, and that was a challenge, a huge challenge for me. And so I started training and I applied to be on the show, which is, you know, there's, I don't know, 75,000 people apply or something like that. And so I, you know, I applied not thinking I would actually get on. Um, but lo and behold, I did. And so I competed on the show, um, that first season and well, for me first season, I think it was like season, it was season nine of, of Ninja Warrior. And so I competed that season and, um, and then, uh, did really well, um, did, did better than I had hoped for. So that was good. Um, and then competed again this past season. So I've competed twice now. Wow. That's <laughs> just so incredible. So when do you find time to train? Joey, my wonderful husband is, um, how I find time. <laughs> he, he let me really, um, I think he saw how good the whole thing was for me. And, and so it was cause I, cause I was training a lot towards, especially towards, uh, competition time, like the last six weeks leading up to competition, I was training you know, every day for hours a day, you know, you have to, and to maintain so, that kind of strength and endurance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You absolutely have to. And so he, um, he just, uh, kind of made it, made it to where, um, he picked up the slack. Would, yeah. And he was like, go, go do it. Even when I was like, uh, oh, it's okay. I don't, you know, I don't want to be gone again today. It was like, no, you, you need this and you, you know, so yeah. Oh, he's, yeah. I well, could so not, that literally. leads me to 
my next question. Well, wait, did I, I didn't want to cut off the end of that story. No, was there more? No, okay. no, no. I just that's think that's it. so <laughs> fascinating and amazing. And uh, that yeah. was going to be my second question and kind of my last question before we launch into our, I, I do like a lightning round of questions at the end. Mm-hmm. So, okay. so how scary. do you find time for your marriage and your partnership and all this? Oh man. Um, cause it seems, I mean, I never get to talk to you. Like this is such a joy to have had all this time to speak with you. I just adore you and respect you so much. Um, but I do see you on social media and I, I kind of get glimpses of it and it does seem like your partnership and even the way you've spoken of it today is so solid and that takes work. That also takes maintenance. Uh, you know, um, I think with Joey and I, it's, we're just, I mean, we've been together since we were 15 and we, we really are best friends. Um, and I think that as partners, we just, we just get each other so well that, um, that there's, there's not a lot of, you know, there's not a lot of confusion on what, what the other needs, you know, at any given time or whatever. We just, we just know and we just get each other so well that um that it's it's pretty easy now that's not to say that our marriage is without i mean we we struggle a lot with um i mean like for i feel like for a while it's been you know we're lacking in the husband wife intimacy department because you know because of life um that's kind of the season that we've been in um but i think the way we make our partnership work is just just res- mutual respect for each other and understanding each other so well. I mean, I know what he's thinking at, at any given minute. I know, I think I know what he's thinking better than he knows what he's thinking. Um, so it's just like, I don't know, we're just, we just know each other so, so well. Um, but we've had, um, we support each other. He's, he's, he is incredibly supportive um, of the fact, like he knows um, how hard it is for me being at home with the kids all day long by myself, um, and homeschooling and all that. So he, he's, and he's, there's been plenty of times he lets me go, you know, like, like the writing retreat, no hi, where I met you. Like he encourages me to do those things because he knows, um, he knows how crazy it is in our house. Um, so yeah, no, we, you know, it's, it's so far from perfect you know, we're, we're very honest about that. Um, but we, we just respect and support each other. And, um, we kind of, I think we kind of know that one day the kids will be older and life will be different. And, and so we just, you know, we just kind of hang in there. That's so awesome, honey. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, ask you three questions that I ask every guest, and then I'm going to go into a lightning round of questions. All right. Cool. Easy peasy. Okay. So Lisa, what do you think about when you hear the word MILF? (laughs) Well, I think of, you know, a hot mom um, that a guy would like to to do. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Do you, are there any other, is there any other context or in terms of, you know, this, our show, I know my show is still kind of new, but. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I love uh, when I heard of your show and and you know the the concept and and the name. I mean, I think I wrote you right away and was like, genius. You did, you like, did. Write is, yeah, I was like, yeah, that is yeah, yeah. yes, that's that's perfect. And so I actually love because MILF, you know, is such has my you know what I my answer my original yes, answers. Of course, <laughs> that's the connotation that 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 comes with it. But I love this idea of it feels empowering, yes. you know, it feels like this, this, your concept and, and this show, it makes me feel empowered. And, and I, I would assume other women too. So I love it. I love the direction that you're going in. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. What is something you've changed your mind about recently? Oh God, I changed my mind about so <laughs> many things all day long. That's nearly impossible. Um, I mean, I think most recently I changed my mind about like what, as far as like a big thing, um, wanting to move out of our house. I, I, I was on a, I was for a while, I wanted to move out of this house because it, because of just all that we'd been through in it and Harvey and our neighborhood is still, you know, a mess. And I was just like, get me out of here. 
Um, and that's how I'd been feeling for really a few months now. Um, and just a few days ago, I was sitting outside with the family and, and, you know, we're on a small lake and it's beautiful and, and it's really, we have an acre and it's, it's really just the perfect spot for our family. It's really our dream place. And so I just said, I told Joey, I was like, you know what? No, we're, we're going to, we're going to make this home. And I, you know, I feel like I have a tendency to just like, Oh, that sucks. Run away from it. You know, like, and, and I just decided like, no, nah, we're going to, this is, we're going to stick this out, make it beautiful, make it what we always dreamed of. And, and so that, that was, that was my big <laughs> latest decision change, but I'm a mind changer. I'm always, I'm always going back and forth on things. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, how do you define success? I define success by, did you, did you, I mean, it sounds so cliche and corny, but with my kids, it's just like, did you give it your all? Were you kind in the process? Um, and were you true to yourself? Um, those are kind of my, my things. If, if so, with those three things, if you gave it your all, if you were kind during the process and, um, if you, what was my last I thing? Forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what the last thing was. Whatever there. the hell those three <laughs> things are. Um, yeah, no, but like, just did, you know, like my, cause I think Ace, my 10 year old has taught me a lot about this because she is constantly, she wants to be an actor. That's her, that's her thing. That's her dream and her goal. And, and it, as you know, it comes with a lot of rejection and a lot of disappointment. And so we had this conversation the other night. Oh, it was where you true to yourself. Yes, true to yourself. Good. Uh, yeah, because that's, um, and so that's what, so we talked about this just last night. She was crying about how, you know, she's, she's had a lot of auditions, but she's never booked a job. And, and, you know, I, I just, those are the things just like, we just got to keep going for it. And, and if this is what you want, you're just going to keep going for it. And you're just going to keep being true to yourself. And, and, you know, to me, that's, that's success in itself. Yes, so absolutely. It's, okay. It's hard as a 10 year old to get that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, definitely. I mean, oh. tell her I'm cheering for her out here in LA. Yeah, I will. I will. Um, okay. So lightning round. Um, okay. Ocean or desert? Ocean. Favorite junk food? Snickers bar. Oh, so good. <laughs> Movies or Broadway show? <laughs> Movies. Daytime sex or nighttime sex? Nighttime. Texting or talking? Oh, that's tough. Depends on the situation, but I'm going to have to go with texting. I'm a bit of an introvert. <laughs> Cat person <laughs> or dog person? Dog. Have you ever worn a unitard? <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Shower or bathtub? Bath. Ice cream or chocolate? Ice cream. On a scale of one to 10, how good are you at making lasagna? Oh, gosh. Zero. <laughs> What's your biggest pet peeve? Uh, um, yeah. I'm thinking about my husband. <laughs> I'm literally just picturing him and all the things that he does that bothers me. Um, <laughs> Oh gosh, I don't know. I don't. I don't have a lot of pet peeves except for I, all the ones that just rattled through your mind. For all those <laughs> that I won't put him on blast. Okay, okay but we'll skip. That. Okay. I, I think there's so much in my world that that, that bothers me. <laughs> okay, if you could push a button and it would create ten years of world peace, but it would also place a hundred year ban on all beauty products, would you push it? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Superpower choice, invisibility or ability to fly? Ooh, fly. Would you rather have a penis where your tailbone is or a third eye, a literal third eye? <laughs> I'll take the penis. That'd be a great party trick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i love it oh. what is the name of your first pet jesse what was the name of the street you grew up on plantation oh that's a good one so your poor name is jesse plantation jesse plantation you may have already been aware of that but um i can work with that yeah yeah jesse <laughs> plantation it sounds oh like god. So many things. I mean, I'm just thinking it's like a very Southern 
It's very Southern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got I a like mint it. julep and she's just right <laughs> swinging around that pole with a mint julep. In her hand. <laughs> yeah, that sounds perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show, Lisa. Oh my gosh, I had so much fun catching up with you. Thank you for me having too, me. Me too. Thanks so much for listening, guys. I really hope you enjoyed my conversation with Lisa. Tune in next week for another fresh MILF episode. Next week's guest is Heidi Rose Robbins. I look forward to talking to you then. Okay, bye. Bye.